Creating a cabin in the snow is part of my new environmental course created for Blender 4.1. And in this six minutes video, I will show you the main topics that I will cover in my course. We start with importing some reference images from a medieval cabin, and then we're creating a cube and deform it so we have the rough shape of the structure. We separate the bottom part, uh, we will use that later. And then we cut holes in the structure for the door frame and the windows, uh, so we can later add the frames in it. Uh, we remesh the main cabin, uh, we're using some high resolution, and we need that for the displacement. We separate the roof, that's pretty easy, we're just selecting the faces and we're pressing P and selection. And then we cut the holes for some cleanup in the structure. Now it's time for adding a texture. We're starting on the bottom part with some rocks and we're focusing on the cabin and adding a trunk texture that shows the logs and we're adding some displacement so it doesn't look really flat. And because we remesh the structure, we can use full displacement on all the materials. Now we're focusing on the roof tiles, adding a bevel so it doesn't look that cubic. Uh, adding a texture, be aware that we have to line this up the good way, otherwise the slates doesn't look right. Now we make a couple of them, we're duplicating them and we're aligning these on the roof, making a lot of duplications and adding some randomness on these roof tiles. So when that's done, we're focusing on the planks, uh, making them separated uh, and in the edit mode we can make some variations uh, wide ones, small ones, and when that is done, we're using the carver tool to add some randomness on the outside of the planks. The carver tool works the best if you combine this with using the sculpting tool, because then you can add some smoothness on some areas, uh, so the planks doesn't look so straight and unnatural. Uh, so that's a really nice workflow. And then we apply the texture using a plank texture on it, and we have a nice brown plank. Then we jump to the creation of some beams and planks. We're using the sculpting tool to add some randomness on the beams, adding the texture, uh, the same as we use for the other planks. Now we create the windows, uh, just do some rotation and swiping of textures to add some random look. And we focus on the window glass. Um, be aware that you add some details so we can do some vertex painting and adding some dirt on the glass. That's a nice effect. And we simply duplicate the windows and rotating the window glass so we have nice reflection on it when we're rendering it. We're jumping to the door frame uh, using the same plank set and the beams. We rotate and duplicate some of the planks and in the edit mode you can add some deformation for a more original look. We import some of my photo scan beams and we're gonna need them for the framework of the structure. So we align them on the corners and making some rotations to add them on each corner of the structure. And that will look really, really nice. The next part is adding some cover for the windows, creating a window hatch using the plank set that we created earlier before. We're aligning this hatch on the window, making the duplications, and then we're focusing on the building foundation. I like to add some rocks using a weight layer, and then we align these rocks with the geometry nodes. We also need a chimney and we're putting this one on the rear of the structure. We're going to deform the roof slates a little bit to add some randomness and then we're focusing on snow on the materials. Starting with the roof slates and we're adding some empty spots are close to the chimney and from that point we just simply covered the whole cabin in snow. So that's pretty much it for the structure. Then we're focusing on the terrain. So we add a terrain and we're going to deform this. We're shaping the background a little bit so it's not looking very flat. Then we separate the middle part so we can add a lot of extra detail by adding a subdivision surface so we can add some displacement on it. Then we vertex paint a path to the camera uh, using a rocky texture and a forest ground. Then we put the snow on the material, so the pad has some snow and visible rocks. At this point we are appending the atmosphere and weather. Uh, we created this in a previous part of this course. And the only thing we need to do is adjusting some sliders so it works in this scene. Then we check out the render and if everything looks good we move on to the trees. We're using some high resolution trees, we're covering them with snow. Also some real snow that comes with Blender, it's a free plugin. 
Um, when that is done, we're going to align the trees in the scene. We also add some trees in the background, doing some rotation. We're not adding the real snow on these trees because that will be too heavy. And if you're happy with all the trees, you make a render and we move on to the 2D flat trees. Uh, we created these in the previous chapter and they work perfectly in this scene as well. We align these trees in the viewport and if it covers the whole background, we can import some rocks, models. They're also exclusive for this course. We do some snow covering, adjusting some of the settings so they're covered well. We're using some flowers. These are from Polyhaven and also covered with some snow. We're doing the work with geometry nodes so we can scatter these on the ground. So they're just popping up in the snow. To add more detail on the landscape, we use these branches and we scatter them all over the ground, doing some rotation so they all pop up on the ground. So at this point, we only have to make some small changes to finalize the scene. And then it's time to import some of the main assets. Uh, there are quite a lot of these assets. Uh, and the great thing is you can just add them randomly around the building and not only close to the cabin, but also some props around the terrain. So you have a nice composition. Then we add a camera. We are adding some camera movement and we're doing some Shakeify on the camera. That's just a plugin that we added in the previous chapter. Then we add play and it's finally time to render out the scene.